What's going on, Average Joes? I'm finally back with another video and just going to do an update on life, reading, and all of that stuff going on. So it's been a while since I've come out with a video because I've been doing lots of traveling. I put out a video a few weeks ago about updates, what was going on. I shot that from a hotel. I'm in another hotel and halfway across the world on this one. Just haven't had a chance to record enough videos to get out. Uh, as I was in the previous hotel when I was recording, I meant to put at least one or two more while I was doing that there, but we were dealing with all kinds of uh, transit stuff, moving, selling a car. Plus, I got a little sick. Um, it was just really like nasally congestion, all this, all this stuff going on. So just like just scrapped all the video stuff, focused on what we were doing. And yeah, we are now it finally made it to Monterey. So we went from Bahrain to Raleigh to Monterey. Now we're here. Long, long, long journey. Uh, so we're still in a hotel, as you can see, but we are settling. We're looking at a house today and all that stuff. So that's happening. Um, we went from Bahrain to basically Raleigh for about five days. We took, took a five-day break or so to see my family, to see my sister and her family, just to chill because that was a really long flight to begin with. Then we had to fly cross country to here. And we're just still working on getting settled and getting things done. We've only been here for about five days or so, but I just felt like I needed to have a video out because it's been a couple of weeks and I've gotten a lot of reading done. Uh, speaking of all of that travel, the flight from Bahrain just to the East Coast was about over 30 hours of travel time. Then we went to Raleigh, five days, like I said, and then from the Raleigh to Monterey was about another 10 hours. So I've had about 40 hours of travel in the last week. So that means a lot of reading that got done, a lot of other stuff got done, a couple of naps here and there, and that's kind of what I'm going to go over now, um, just, and just general life update, the fact that, hey, we made it here, and hopefully I can get some more videos out, um, hopefully we can get a house soon, internet, all that set up, just who knows about furniture, that's always uh, fun with traveling. Yeah, it's kind of why I've been MIA for a while, and I've even tried to watch some other people's videos, but even watching YouTube and, you know, doing all that stuff is a little bit harder than normal. So... Uh, to get into reading. So starting off for the reading, I first I'll say that I finished Leviathan Falls. I, I started Leviathan Falls end of last year. This is the final book in the Expanse series. And so the last book, listen to it on the, uh, or finished it on the flight. I finished the last third of it on the flight. It's a pretty long book. And it was pretty good. I think I missed a few things just because of like dozing off in, in here and there. And then also just the fact that Expanse is a fairly confusing book their series in general because of all the science stuff that happens and just so many things happening it was good i liked a lot of it uh, i think i'm pretty sure i missed a few things that i'm gonna have to go back and, and either hear about read about something like that i just haven't felt like it so far so pretty sure i gave it like four out of five uh, I, I don't always do um book ratings but it was good um it's just the expanse series is so good it is you know such a good epic space fantasy or space series the uh, james marsh or no 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 that's dresden um Jefferson Mays does a really, really good job in narrating The Expanse. So even if they're really, really big and they seem daunting to you, I recommend the audiobooks 1000% because they are really, really good. So I finished Leviathan Falls. Then just like my reading plan that I said with my priority reading list is that right, right when I, oh, I guess I should probably tell, I finished, I also finished um, The Fall of Babel. I did that while we were still in Bahrain. Um, in the hotel. So that's the final book of the Semlin. Semlin Lassen is the first book, the, the Books of Babel. And as a whole, that felt like a four out of five series. Like every single book was a four. I liked a lot of it. The tower was the absolute best part of the series, the world, just being a part of the tower. Characters were a bit hit and miss for me. A couple of them were really, really good. Semlin himself was kind of meh. I wasn't really a huge Semlin fan. He did some okay things, some cool things sometimes, but then for the most part, he was just kind of there or just frustrating and just like, yeah. And some of the other characters were just like, well, yeah, okay, whatever. So I'm kind of lukewarm on some parts of it, but as a series as a whole is a really, really good. It's really unique. That ending, I still don't know what to make of it. And I'm not going to say anything because there's four other reasons, but if you read it, then you kind of know what I'm talking about. But like such a weird and crazy and just like ending, I still have thoughts and, and I don't really know. There's a few things that I didn't like about it. Uh, two of the characters that made me not like them even more because of the ending. And then a couple of the ending choices, they were just like, yeah, we'll just end this here and kind of like cut it off. And like, it just, some of the, some of the parts of the ending felt lazy. Other parts were just like too grand. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Um, some were cool. 
all that stuff is just the ending was weird. Uh, I still liked it as a whole. Everything was good. It's something I might, I would actually probably like to talk to people about just because of how they viewed certain things would be pretty interesting to me. But so that, that series is finished. So I had to finish those two books before I could even start my 2022 reading because there's just so much overhang. So to start the 2022 reading, I did, um, I've started Assassin's Apprentice and I'm already three quarters of the way through. Just on the flight alone, I read over 200 pages in those, all those times. And if you travel for a long time, you know that typically reading is one of the first things to go because you get tired, your eyes get tired and you can't really focus anymore. You start dozing off. It's just easier that way. So that's why I switched to so many audiobooks. But Assassin's Apprentice is going better than I thought it was going to go. I was a bit worried because every time people would talk about Robin Hobb and her writing is all of this about, oh, how good her, her prose are, how good her, uh, her descriptions and all these things are. And I'm just like, man, I don't want another overly long descriptive prosy type writing. I've done really, really bad with those, DNF a few, but it's in first person, which I didn't realize. And that changes everything. The fact that it's in first person makes it so much better because I can understand their thought process and how they're seeing and viewing and doing things. And it just makes so much more sense to me than just an author taking their own liberties and describing everything they want to go on and everything, these side tangents and all this crap that I probably don't care about. But the fact that it's in first person makes it so much better. And I'm digesting a lot better, a lot easier. And Fitz is a decent character. I know people are were like absolutely love Fitz or they feel so bad for him. And I'm just like, he's okay. He's like, he kinda, he's kind of cool. Like there's kind of cool things. And I, I feel for him in some situations, but like he's also kind of privileged and I don't feel that bad for him at times. Cause like you, you're going to expect to feel uh, down on you for some things. Yeah, every main protagonist is going to go through hard times or else they wouldn't be much of a main protagonist. They're just, they would be kind of boring. So yeah, there's going to be people that don't like you. There's going to be all these things, but he's not that, he doesn't have it that bad. He's put up in a freaking castle. Um, yeah, so I have, I have pretty good thoughts on, on that series so far. I think I'm at like 72%. So within like a week, I've already read the first three quarters of it and should hopefully finish it within the next couple of days ish, depending on how much reading we get time wise, you know, moving and stuff. Then my audiobook. So after Leviathan Falls, because I had so much time on the plane, I needed to listen to another one instead of just reading the whole time. Oh, by the way, the plane that we were on, it's a military um, rotator charter plane. So we don't get TVs. They don't play movies. You just have your own stuff. There's like a one big tv in the front like like you know decades ago when they did on planes to where they play one movie for everyone but i wasn't interested in any of those um so i started white knight book nine of dresden and i've liked it a lot i've knocked out the first three quarters of it just flying and doing all that stuff i am a little bit farther now um because now i just listen to it a little bit when i work out and it's going good for the, for the most part of the book it was felt like a segue setup book like there was things were happening and you were, you felt things were progressing, but it didn't feel like it was that much at stake, that grand in the grand scheme of things. It was just like, yeah, we're going to further along this person. We're going to further along this person. We're going to grow this a little bit. And then we're just going to go from there and see what happens. But as this book is ending, it's definitely opens up, which has happened in a few Dresden books. They've, the more that's revealed, the more things are connected. So really, really liking it again, another Dresden book. I really like spacing out the Dresden books because a, there's so many of them. I still have, you know, eight more to catch up to whatever's out. And then there's still going to be another eight that still has to come out. So spacing them out purposely is completely fine with me because it just feels so good. It makes you appreciate and feel so good to come back to the books. And the the narration is so amazing by uh, James Marsters, I believe. Um, I keep on doing this series. Yeah. Awesome narration. Love the books. Uh, so after this one, I'll probably take several month breaks again, probably not till the spring till I read the next one because I like to spread it out. So that was a lot of reading that I got done in the last like week or so. Finished two books, got three quarters of the way through two other longer books. Um, yeah, so that's going great. And I'm actually not sure what I'm going to read next. Usually I have some sort of a plan, but with everything going on, I knew the first books that I was going to start. And after that, it's just like kind of a free for all. Let's see what I feel. And I have no idea what I'm feeling now. Um, potentials, I know I don't always talk about the, the books that I'm considering reading next, but potentials that I'm thinking of are... <clears throat> unsold so i finally start the cradle series um lauren over a pair of Vic empire is supposed to start that book this this month i believe um stephanie as well uh, stephanie's book first is supposed to start it and her and i want to have a sort of do-over buddy read because we both uh failed and dnf'd at uh tiana we just weren't feeling it so 
unsold, we want to do that one. So I might hop on that one just because those two are reading it and it would just be good to have a good dialogue and people to talk with. And it's part of my priority read. It's on the second tier of my priority reading. It's short. It might be really fun to get through. So that's a high, high one. Nightmare Land, those are so easy to throw in. They're novella size in 150 pages or something. I'm on book four. And those are just great in between palate cleansing s books because they're short enough. I read them in a couple of days and it helps me think about what I want to read next, kind of like the di digest between the bigger series. So those are really, really good. So Nightmare Land or even I have short stories by KJ Parker and Alan over at Library of Alexandria has really, really, and even Zara um, has really recommended and loved some of KJ Parker's short stories or novellas. So those would be easy to throw in. I think Purple and Black is the one that I would go with. And again, it would just be a nice segue book to be like, okay, I'll read this really quick. And then I can think about what I actually want to read after that. So those are up there. Winter World as well by A.G. Riddle. Um, again, Lauren is reading this one and uh, it has been recommended. And, you know, this is another Kindle Unlimited book. So, you know, props to Kindle Unlimited. A.G. Riddle, I read the first, I think I read three of his other ones in one of his Apocalypse series, the uh, Atlantis Gene. Yes, I got that right. Uh, and then always, of course, Star Wars EU. I need to continue my Star Wars EU reading. Those are like three or 400 pages, don't too long, and it's Star Wars. So those are just super easy. So I already know the universe. You just jump in, see what the hell's going on in the world. You know that you know the universe or whatever and the politics, and then you just jump out and it's like, okay, it's totally fine. So those are the potentials that I'm thinking of. Let me know if any of those appeal to you. Hopefully I can put up these cards uh, and stuff uh, when I do the editing. And then non-reading. So other things that I did on the flight. So that was 40 hours of travel. Just to recap, I didn't read the entire time because you can only focus on reading so much and then you just start to go into a haze. So I watched, I actually watched a couple of episodes of The Witcher. I watched three. I pre-downloaded some. And it's funny because when I first, like last year, two years ago, when The Witcher first season came out, I tried to watch it. And it just felt really scattered, really weird. And I had read the first book with all the short stories. Loved all, loved the very first book with all the short stories. Really, really good. But even watching the show, it just felt like like some things I recognized, some things not really too much. It was like, eh, I just couldn't get completely into it. Well, this past year, I finally played the Witch 3 video game and going through all the world and seeing all everything how's going how's going on and the characters and knowing just knowing the world so much more through the video game made me want to watch the show and like the show even more. So I watched three episodes, binge the, the three episodes back to back. And I want to get to the next ones. I need to catch up to season two because that's where my wife's at and that way we can watch them. So yeah, much more into The Witcher now and the video games help that, which is rare when it comes to like book adaptations. Usually it's like, okay, you read the books first and then everything else you just kind of, you just kind of get through. But the video games, I think are the best representation of The Witcher. It really immerses you, it really helps you pick up everything because there's just so much going on in The Witcher world that the short stories don't completely grasp it. And then as you get the other books, you just don't get enough of it at once, but the, but the games, you just, you get it all. So highly recommend that. I also played, I had my Switch with me. I played Lego Harry Potter, a really easy one too. I was actually playing this while listening to Dresden because Lego Harry Potter doesn't take that much brain power. You just kind of can kind of just like do it. I set it up on my tray table and then took the Joy-Cons out. And yeah, I was just basically just going through puzzles, moving shit around with the wand and, and solving all these puzzles while I was listening to, to Harry kill some demons and stuff. Uh, so that was good. That was a good combo. Um, so yeah, that was basically what I did on the flight. I got two decent naps in the first 30 hour leg, which it wasn't all that much in the grand scheme of things, but at least I slept some. So not too bad. Overall, decent flight. We had plenty and plenty of snacks that we pit, um, packed. So plenty of leg room. Surprisingly, it was good. And I guess to round out, uh, it's football season. I finally got back to the final game of the season. They got to see the final Sunday football. And, you know, over the Bahrain, we never watched football because it started at 9 p.m. And they don't have sports bars that you can just go and watch that stuff in. So coming here was like an ultimate treat. Football is my main sport. I got to watch the uh, Big Ben's final. I'm a Steelers fan, by the way. I got to watch Big Ben's final game in Baltimore. And coming from Baltimore, but being a Steelers fan, that was kind of cool to see. Watched it with one of my best friends growing up. He's a Ravens fan, so that was a good time. Um, and then, obviously, I just saw them get their butts kicked against KC, but it was pretty much expected. It seems like everybody in the playoff got either got their butts kicked or uh, kicked ass. So, yeah, uh, love football. Enjoying having watching that, and especially on the West Coast. West Coast football schedule is fantastic. Game starting at 10 a.m., so, so good. 
anyway, that's pretty much what I got going on now. Um, we are looking at a house today. We've been car shopping as well. We got a car lined up. We got a house just about lined up. All those, both of those things basically just have to go sign and finalize and, and, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's kind of thing. Uh, hopefully everything goes, works out, but that's, what's going on. Hopefully a week from now, we have a house and internet, but we probably won't have furniture. Who knows when we're going to have furniture, when that's going to be delivered. It's all in storage. Uh, so yeah, that's just my big life update of what's going on. Well, what's going on with you? It's been a while since I've had a video out, since I've touched base with anybody. So how's everybody's reading going? What have you been reading? Uh, have you just, have you gotten into your priority reads yet for the year? Uh, and what do you think I should read next for my potential ones? Let me know and let's chat more in the comments. Thank you.